Hey, welcome to the newest episode, Aviana Detailing Vlog. We are back at Malibu Aerospace where it all began. It's really cold, which reminds me of the good old days when we were in a different hangar that didn't have heated floors, didn't have this awesome lighting, and uh, every morning the hangar doors would open, winter, summer, doesn't matter, and uh, a lot of airplanes were moved around. Anyway, we're working on a Meridian. 600 Bravo Romeo. One of the things Meridians do is they have these vortex generators up here. So that'll be fun. Some of the other um, characteristics of Meridians versus the Malibus is they have a bigger wing so you can see this section. Um, this part, you don't see that. Um, that's a Meridian thing. We've got the PT6 turboprop spitting out tons of exhaust. A lot of that exhaust ends up on the left side of the fuselage up here. Um, so we're, we're going to expect to see a lot of scratches and dullness on this paint. Th this looks like a really nice uh, metallic uh, black, but it, it's, it's both dirty and, and I can see there's a lot of scratches in there. So paint correction is going to look awesome on here. Um, on the underside as well, we expect to see some yellowing. Now this side isn't too bad, but generally, I haven't looked at this one yet, generally the underside of the horizontal stabilizer on the left-hand side, so on the pilot side, gets hammered on these. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, so you see all of this, all this staining and oiliness. Um, we can reduce this. Generally, this isn't gonna go away 100%, unfortunately. I'm a detailer, not a magician. Um, but overall, just looking at it, actually, there, there's a lot of dullness in the whites, too. So um, there, there's quite a bit of oxidation. That's going to come out. This plant's going to look really, really good. I have a good feeling about this. It's going to be a lot of work. Um, those vortex generators are typically a lot of work. That staining underneath is going to be a lot of work. But um, I, I'm excited, especially since we have black wings up here. Um, and there's a lot of scratches in here. Paint correction is going to make a big difference on this. Um, I'm excited to show you what I can do with that. Now this, this is also a metallic blue. And uh, it looks like it's a straight red, but it's a metallic blue. So that's really going to pop. These whites are going to pop. I, I see the whites are kind of dull and um, they're not actually white. They're just stained. So I'm going to get that taken care of. Got a lot of work, so it's Friday night, it's around nine o'clock, I just got in. I'm gonna start with a no rinse wash, um, probably do some degreasing where there's a lot of exhaust. We're gonna do no rinse wash, get all the abrasives off the paint, and uh, we'll start with a test spot and see where that gets us. Last night washing the plane and then um, doing some testing to see what works best on this paint. And usually I find that a two-step process doesn't necessarily look that much better, but because a large part of this plane is a darker color um, and the whites are actually really oxidized, the, the heavier paint correction ended up being significantly better. And that's usually not the case. So. I, uh, I did a test area, FaceTime with the owner, and showed kind of the differences between the two. Um, both look good. The two-step looks a lot better, but obviously costs more. And um, after seeing it, he, uh, he agreed that we should probably go with the two-step. So I'm going to show you real quick the process that I'll be doing on this plane. I got some areas taped off here. We're going to start with the rotary wool pad. And um, I tried a few different compounds. It seems like the last cut is working best in this particular case. So I'm put some on here. So we'll do an aggressive cut first with this. Then we're gonna use a yellow pad with hyper polish and 
uh, take out any holograms that this step might cause. Wipe that down and look and see if we need to repeat this step. So even though it's a two-step correction, sometimes I repeat the more aggressive step if there are paint defects that I think I can get out that didn't come out. But in this case, we got pretty good correction. Um, now we're going to swap this out. Look at all the paint residue coming off there. Swap to the foam pad. Hyper polish, our old standby. Now we're also going to do this side um, just to show what a one step would have looked like. Pull the tape off here. So on the left, we just did our one step with hyper polish. You can see the tape line. Here's the two step, which is definitely glossier. So if we look at it with a better light, you can see that, you know, there's just a much cleaner reflection with the two step than the one step. And there, there's still improvement with the one step, but the two steps just that much better. So definitely worth going that extra step. The, the thing I'm finding out, and, and I, I knew about this, um, when I do heavier corrections, we're, we're removing um, more material. So we're creating more residue. That's why after just a short polishing pass here, the, the wool pads are completely loaded up. We have to blow them out. The, the problem is because we're doing a heavier correction on this plane, um, the, the battery power tool, the, the rotary, as much as I love this thing, it, it has to draw a lot of amps because it, it has to put out a lot of torque for long periods of time. Um, the batteries get hot and they start overheating. And when they overheat, they go into timeout. Then I have to put the battery in the doorway. Um, it's zero degrees Fahrenheit outside, so they cool down quickly. Good deal, right? No, not what I wanna do. Got a lot of work, don't have time for that. So what I'm doing, using the same wool pad same um, compound, I'm doing what's called a knockdown step. So we're taking the dual action polisher, same pad, same combo, and doing a quick initial pass. And what that does, it takes that heavy oxidation off, it takes off the lighter scratches and swirls, basically any distraction that's on the paint, it's gonna remove. So now, when I switch to my more powerful tool by mechanism of action, the rotary, um, I don't have to cut through all that shit, right? Like, it, it's, it starts with a clearer surface. So now my cut on that can really go after the paint defects and really um, perfect that paint because we already got rid of the, the, the superficial stuff. Um, I'm still gonna use a foam pad after the heavy correction to, to really finesse it. So it's kind of turning into a three-step correction, but steps one and two are basically the same thing, just um, spread out over two steps so I can work bigger areas and get better results.
Good morning. It's Sunday morning, and uh, it's cold. It's nine below. I got, uh, I got a decent amount of work done. We're still in paint correcting, and uh, I still have the underside left to do, which isn't going to be a full crazy correction. So I'm actually looking forward to the underside for once. Uh, left wing is done. Most of the left fuselage is done. Just have a little bit more left on the front and the top for the extensive paint correction there. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get going on the on the bottom and uh, wipe it down, start coating. A little bit behind schedule on it, but it, it did get upgraded to a more intensive paint correction. So I guess in that sense we're doing fine, but um, I was just hoping to start on the other plane that I need to do at some point as well. So. I'm gonna finish my coffee, get back to work. So I got um, fuselage done, everything on the top side is done. Took a really long time actually, not happy with that, but we're here on the underside. Um, this is the area that I showed you earlier that had a lot of staining. For this, I'm gonna use a different tool, my favorite tool in fact, the Mirka Ceros. This is actually a sander. Um, the power supply is separate, so it's, it's really light. It's brushless, so it's really quiet. Um, I'm gonna put a microfiber pad on it, get some compound, and work this out. I, I did a little test area. I, going into this, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get this perfect. For one, there's exposed rivets, so I can't be too aggressive. Um, there's vortex generators. There's just all sorts of little obstructions, but it, it's looking better. It's, it's getting shinier. And um, overall, this is probably the best course of action we have on here, um, just short of a repaint. So I'm gonna get that done. Start on the underside of the fuselage, underside of the wings. For once, I'm actually looking forward to that because that, that'll just be a one-step correction instead of this ridiculous three-step correction we've been doing on here. But the, the plane's looking awesome, and I can't wait to get it coated. You can see this side already did. This side hasn't been done yet. Um, the key here again is residue management. So we have a lot of oxidation and a lot of staining that needs to come off. So we're going to work in small sections and constantly blow off these pads so they don't lose their effectiveness. So that's the knockdown step to get the major oxidation off which is now all in the pad. Then we go at it again. So after the underside of the horizontal stabilizer got polished, went on to the wing, radar pod, landing gear doors, all that kind of stuff. And again, just a quick one step. So that was pretty easy. After all the paint correction was completed, we did our panel wiping step, and panel wipe is that strong alcohol solution that dissolves any, uh, any lingering polish oils or waxes, anything that might be on that paint that could interfere with coating adhesion. Then it's coating time. I wiped the ceramic coating on, and then it's pretty much right away wiped off again with two different microfiber towels to make sure it's perfectly level, and uh, the, the results speak for themselves. Check it out.